Thousands of demonstrators opposed to the Vietnam War assembled in the nation's capital for a mass protest. For the most part orderly, minor scuffles did occur between the demonstrators and hecklers. A three-hour parade takes the demonstrators across the Potomac on their way to the Pentagon. The crowd estimated at about 50,000 persons was a loose confederation of some 150 groups and included adults, students, even children. It is at the Pentagon where the first test of strength comes. A mass, beautiful movement that's going to stop them from dropping those bombs. We had something like 60% of the American people believing that Saddam Hussein was connected with 9-11. They blatantly lied to all of us. The rallies of February 15th followed the sun. It was Australia, it was Sydney. North Asia and South Asia, Africa, into Europe. And then we had London. From the left, the right, from the radical to the uncommitted, they came. Whatever the figures, without doubt, one of the largest gatherings, let alone protest rallies, in English history. It was the day the police simply banished the car from central London. Preparations from first light. In the frosty air, early morning political warm-up acts. America is no stranger. He breaks stacks of resolutions. Peace, but talking. Celebrity campaigners out of bed and out in force. The last time we witnessed major nonpartisan anti war protests was back in 2002 2003 against the invasion of Iraq. While the number of US wars of aggression and the resulting casualties and destruction has been going up exponentially, the extent size and frequency of organized and united nonpartisan anti-war protests have been drastically reduced, practically down to nothing. Is this due to the far less people being against costly wars of aggression? No. Is this because the destructive wars have become more justifiable? Absolutely not. Okay then, what is the deal? In this episode, I will be talking about the process of neutering nonpartisan anti-war movements and peaceful protests. Step by step, I'm going to walk you through the neutering process. How the deep state main players approach and take over promising activist movements. How they co-opt, channel, and neuter real activists and organizers. Who are the top five deep state players in the neutering of nonpartisan movements and protests, and why? In this episode, I provide you with my real-life, direct, first-hand experience during the period between 2003 and 2006, yes, over 15 years ago, when the top five deep state players approached me and my over 150 government whistleblowers organization, when mega dollars were offered, elite board of advisors was proposed with an obscured price tag attached to it all. I go beyond the humanitarian cost of U.S. wars abroad and discuss the cost at home. How my unknowing fellow Americans are affected by these wars. Concerned about our broken healthcare system? Worried about our deteriorating education system? Outraged by our nearly one million homeless on the streets? Wary of our outdated and about to expire infrastructure at home, from bridges and dams to roads and power plants? Then tune in, because our non-stop costly wars of aggression 
are the main culprits or one of the main culprits behind these problems. And finally, I talk about possible ways to challenge all this, counter the deep state, and help revive organized nonpartisan activism. I've been wanting to do a comprehensive episode on this topic for a very, very long time. In the last few days, after reading dozens of emails and comments from my Newsbot community friends, I decided to just get down to it and do it. This episode will be for my Newsbot community, where I know every single member is anti-war and critical thinking activist. It's a community where there is a very intense desire to do something, do it peacefully and in a nonpartisan way. If you are one of those people and interested, then come over to Newsbud and join our activist community. Thank you all. This is Sabal Edmonds reporting for Newsbud from Turkey. Thank mm-hmm. you.